Three, two, one. Wipe my nose. Hey, good morning, you guys. Good morning. I am talking to Jay Doherty from Ireland. So, Jay, can you say your name? I want to make sure you say it right. My name is Jay Doherty. And for anyone that's listening from overseas, I'm going to talk extra slow because Irish people tend to get very excited and talk really fast. So I'll, I'll talk slow, as slow and as clear as I can. Jay Doherty. Yes, thank you for that. I am uh, listening very intently. It's just, yeah. like English, <laughs> just like English, but a little bit different, right? I know. Uh, where I come from, we speak a kind of mix between English, Irish and Scottish. So it's kind of a, our own wee language, but uh, I'll do my best. Hmm. So, right, right. So do you have to change your language when you travel in the UK? You have to consciously think about where you are and... Just, just your speed. And there's a lot of words that we use are just really rural country dialect that only people around here would, would know. Mm -hmm. So... Um, it's always it's amazing to go and talk to people from different countries and different cultures because you realize you've got to talk slow and you've got to be clear. And the English that you always thought was proper English is basically a kind of jave talk, really. That's how we were brought up. Okay. Well, it's a beautiful diversity. All right, Jay, can you tell me about, um, tell me about your, your, your photography, your business, um, introduce yourself a little bit before we uh, go into the learnings. Good man. Well, before I start, thank you very much for hosting me on here. And thanks for your patience earlier on. We had a massive technical balls up, but my wife came to my aid and we sorted it out. So thanks for your patience. And thanks for Fearless. I'm sure you hear it all the time, but you put so much goodness into this planet. Photography community, of course, but the massive stuff you do for charity, it's just a great thing. You put some good energy into this world. So thanks a million. I am personally, I'm so grateful. Fearless has just made me such a, a well-rounded photographer. And, um, but anyway, I'm from the Northwest of Ireland, um, near the Atlantic, a wee village called Muff in Donegal. I've been taking wedding photographs for about 14 years. I've maybe photographed about 600 weddings. My father was a wedding. Or my father was a wedding photographer. He shot a few weddings and then he just gave it up. And um, and then I through my skateboarding, through surfing, I was I was always had a camera around me. And eventually, I just lent itself somehow to getting into wedding photography. A friend asked me to do his wedding for free, and and so it rolled. You know, like so many people, we just mm -hmm. we just started off doing friends' weddings for free it was because I was the guy that had the camera 15 years ago. So. I was the guy that was asked, and sure, why, why not? It's uh, what a great journey it's taken me on so far. Okay, so t tell me about the the workshop that you teach, or the uh, what do you? Is it a yeah. workshop, or was it a what is it? Is it a class? It's like a retreat. Uh huh. Um, workshop stroke retreat. We it's called Learning to Fly. We host it here in in Donegal every autumn in October, just after the wedding season. Um, it's five years old now. We've had so many amazing teachers and amazing experiences. Maybe it's different. I would imagine there's a lot of workshop or a lot of experiences like that around the world. I'm sure you've been to a few, but um, we, we don't think of it too much as a kind of educational experience, although it is for the whole, the whole body and mind, but it's a retreat. It's a place to go and meet new friends and share. And we listened to great speakers. We had Frank Boutonnet and Rocio last year. We have, um, we have so many great Irish speakers. We have Victor Lex coming hopefully in October, if everything's okay, Stephen Rooney, and so many Irish photographers as speakers. But beyond that, we do yoga, we eat together, we swim in the sea early in the morning. We do photo shoots, we walk in the mountains. We just, we invite everyone to speak and tell us, share their stories. And we all hug and cry and drink Guinness. And, and it's a great time, it really is. It's the best, the, 
best thing that I do. I'm so happy to be involved. Well, I hope it's still on. I hope you're you're still allowed to have it in October, and uh, that that'll be a good one. I hope so. I, I people have asked me, is it going to go ahead? And I honestly don't know. I can only guess right now, but I guess yes. I because Ireland is so rural and we're so spread out, and my generally the groups are twenty five who attend. So hopefully it'll be. It'll work, and if not, we'll postpone it, and we'll maybe do a smaller group session or some kind of celebration. Really, just a community thing of of kind of given up on this being a any kind of financial success this year. It's just we'll try and make it as best an event to maybe serve people and and bring a community together and do a bit of healing, even if it has to be later in the year or early next year. But who knows? We'll uh, we'll say a few prayers. Okay. Well, we'll wait. Good man. And you're always invited. Yes, I am invited. And you're welcome, Matt is at the door. So anytime. Yeah, I'm itching to go places, but I'm I've been home for so long. But yes, I it's on my list. My list to visit Ireland. Yes. You'll be treated like a king over here. Oh my gosh, not deserving. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jay. I wrote your name big because you wrote it so small, so I'll make sure people know. Oh, very good. I, love it. So I asked you, I asked, I asked photographers to share your five uh, most important learnings that you've come across in your life. Um, and uh, I want to learn. I want to learn. So, ready? I'll try my best. Okay. So, you send these to me. Number one. Yeah. So, kindness is the ultimate strength. Can you explain that? I could almost, at its rawest and most basic, I think for success in this world in, of wedding photography, we could, we could even use it. I could give you two learnings. It would be kindness and hard work. And kindness is the first one because we're in a, we're in a, in a job that is primarily associated with being around people and people react well to kindness. Um, someone once described it as a wedding photographer should be a calming constant in all the insanity of a wedding. There is so much going on for the poor bride and groom, and we've been there many, many, many times, so we can, we can help them in so many ways, um, bring a sense of calm, simple wee things like bring a Bring a bottle of water for a bride who has who has mind is on so many other things on the wedding morning that she's forgetting her her own basic needs like a drink of water. So we'll always have a glass of water. Bring a can of coke or a wee mint before. Just be a, a lovely asset to the whole day. Um, just being kind and just maybe you know or maybe you've went to events when the parents would tell you how. A photographer used to be like a dictator and people were almost scared of all oh, the photographers arriving now and he's going to push us around and when you be there with a with a, a gentle sense around you people are just so grateful and the, you're you're likely to get better photographs in one way but um being kind um in other ways i like to over deliver um i give plenty of Plenty of extras as standard with every wedding, extra pages in the wedding album, deliver the photos sooner. Um, one thing I started to do last year, I got a, you know, like a DNP event printer. And just the next day after wedding, I maybe print six or seven photos uh, of the family photos and just send them to the bride's parents mm -hmm. with a thank you letter. Thanks very much for being so kind. Yesterday you hosted me in your home and thanks very much. And people don't expect this and, and they react very well. Um, I always bring a bottle of champagne to every bride's house in the morning just as a gift, just to help them relax and, and, and show them that I am genuinely on your side. I'm here to party with you guys. Um, it's funny, I was doing my accounts a few months ago and 
I was showing my accountant, here's all my bill for champagne for last year. And my accountant says, no, we can't, we can't put, we can't write you off your tax for <laughs> one year worth of champagne. But, um, that's just a funny story. Um, just to try and try and be a calming constant throughout the day, be kind and do whatever you can, because ultimately we have the best job in the world, I think. And we are treated so well. We're, we're, we're treated like royalty on a wedding. So it's just nice to, it's nice to be as nice as you can to the people that need it. And it feels good. And so we, we get better photos out of it. In a, in a business kind of marketing sense, it's good PR. We get more bookings. But ultimately, it's good for the self-confidence. It's just it's good for the self-esteem. And, and it's every, everyone wins, I think, if you just attend a wedding with just a sense of kindness surrounding you and you'll do anything, no matter how silly the request. If they want to do kind of crazy photos that you might have seen in the 1980s, my answer is always yes. Can I do a photo of me like double exposed inside a brandy glass. Of course, I will do anything you want me to do. I am just here for you because I'm living the dream. So sure, it's it's easy enough to, to help. Does that sound okay? Yeah, yes, yes. Thank you for sharing. Grand. Sometimes I talk very fast when I get excited. Sure. Oh, yeah. I Even I can understand. <laughs> yeah. you, you can play it back on like 50% speed. <laughs> It's good. Okay, let's go to number two. Thank you for sharing. Um, ah, this is the other one, right? The hard work. Yeah. So this is a quote called, from uh, a fellow. Oh. I was going to read it. Yeah, a fellow called. Yeah, go go for it, my man. Okay, opportunity comes dressed in overalls and looks like hard work. So, it's a quote from a fellow called Thomas Edison. Okay. Who I believe he, amongst other things, he invented the light, light bulb. And I, when I first read it, I thought, God, isn't that a great, great way to look at our job? There's plenty of opportunities out there, but we are self-employed and we're entrepreneurs. And no, as far as I can tell in the world of self-employment history, there's no one has ever had success without working really, really, really hard. So um, you got to just get your work boots on and get out there and labor hard. I've got this, I've got this book. I don't know if you can see it's called good shit and it's just full of quotes and that Thomas Edison ones in there. Um, there's no substitute really for hard work. And I honestly believe that's really got me. Sometimes people say you've got, you've got great creative, gift and you and you're a natural but it's really everything is just down to hard work um everything i have i work for really hard sometimes in the height of wedding season i work 60 70 hours a week i start in my office at half seven in the morning and sometimes i'm there to half 10 at night editing and 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 trying to sort out my whole my whole process um it's as basic as that, just working really hard. And there's a nice wee way of looking at it. Like we want something as audacious and rebellious as the ability to control our own destiny. And we have to work really, really hard for that, mm. for that uh, ultimate luxury. So uh, hard work. There's no substitute. I'm sorry, folks. So what does your, what does your family think about this? Well, you working so so many hours a day or all the time well, we have a wee holiday retreat in the the real extreme coast here by the sea so i work really really hard but then i can spon spontaneously take time away and we go away for two or three days at a time every month i take three days there's my daughter she wants to say hello will you come in and say hello she brought her pet chicken. <laughs> and now, say hello, this is Hoy. He's, he's in America. And this Hi. is Emily. Hi, Emily. Nice to see you. And she's 10. Yeah. And she, she's, she likes to come to engagement sessions with me. And she went to a wedding with me last, last year. She was my second shooter. Wow. 
and she's mm. she has a Fuji XT2, so it's nice and small, and she has a she works with a fifty millimeter lens, so it was such a good buzz to have her there. She must love photography like you do. Yeah, you like you like photos, or she likes video too a wee bit. Yes, I think she prefers video. We'll take a chicken down. We'll say bye bye. Thanks for coming. Bye, Emily. <laughs> All right, off you go. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Will you close the door? Good man. Thanks very much. Um, so, like I was saying, really, I do work very hard, but I, I'm, I take care to take a lot of time away. And every month, every month in the summer, I cross off one week that's family time. So there'll be three weeks of hard work. Mm -hmm plus days off in between and I get up every morning to feed the animals and, and be with my children. And, um, but then we have a full week away together every all summer and all winter we, we spend by the coast. So I'm wary of working very hard because that's what I did. I just learned that lesson. I did that maybe five, six years ago when my business was starting to really take off. And I, was, I photographed 65 weddings in one year and Everyone suffered, and it was because they didn't really know. I didn't know anything else, but I just, oh no, oh, here comes, sorry, here comes someone else to say hello. This is my son, Pollen. Hi. <laughs> I brought another chicken. <laughs> I got a lot of chickens. Yeah. yeah. So the, ah. these are the family pets. There now. So the chickens are walking around. You say hello. Oh, how do you see him? He can see us, but we can't see him because he's giving us oh, a meeting. Who's that? That's Hoy. He's in America. Is that okay? Yeah. Will you get home with mommy now? Yeah, here we go. Right. Okay. We'll be back to mama. Oh. There we go. Oh. We'll get home with mommy now and there's that ice cream in the fridge. In the freezer. It's not ice cream. Okay. It's a football special. Oh. Okay. Shall I see you in a minute? Okay. <laughs> yeah, jump down with me. Jump down with me, Erda. Go in here quick. I have to speak to this guy. <laughs> Sorry. We're, co oh. we're coming back. Okay. There we go. So we so we spend a lot of time by the coast, and uh, I've just learned the hard way of work overworking, and it's no fun for anyone. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, skitter. Uh, okay, thanks, gang. Some pressure. Right. Thanks very much. No worries. Okay, ready to go number three? Yeah. Okay, what is that? What is that? More work, Jay. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Maybe I work too hard. Is that the common theme here? So work, work harder on yourself, yourself than on your job. Than on your job. Work harder yeah. on yourself than on your than on your job. Yeah. Um that's a wee quote from an inspiration of mine called Jim Rohn. He's a he's a great uh kind of business leader and uh, inspirational speaker uh, work harder on yourself than your job really that's just about self-development about trying your best to become the best version of yourself trying to self-actualize really um, for me that's probably one of the most important kind of journeys I've ever been on um, going to workshops going to conferences and when you're there like I went to I went to Fearless in Budapest was it two years ago or was it three years ago quite a while ago yeah yeah I can't remember right. I remember I remember seeing you in the hotel and I, I was starstruck I was there's there's the guy this is the man and um so when you I go to a lot of workshops and when you're there I just fill your books take notes Drink it in, meet lots of people, listen to people's stories, um, just educate. There's so much education out there and there's so much out there for free. And as well as wedding photography education, improve your, your whole life and your whole well-being. I do a lot of yoga. Um, last year I was training for my yoga teaching certificate. And so I was just immersed in the yoga world for about two years. And so yoga just nurtures the soul, nurtures the mind. It, it maybe opens your outlook and, and 
helps bring helps you heal and uh, and it does so much for me i think yoga is one of the most important things for me as a business owner as a parent and as someone that's trying to look after their health especially for your head right now i think um maybe in these harder times for anyone around the world i know a lot of people are finding solace and refuge on a yoga mat so for me i would definitely try and bring as many people into the yoga world as possible wherever i go um and beyond that there just having an openness and a mindset to kind of invite new people into your life and be open to change um just becoming a better version of yourself and maybe letting go of all the hurt and the pain and the fear that maybe kind of kept you small throughout your life i know all this stuff has kind of been lifted off my shoulders over the last few years and I, I'm a happier person. And as simple as being a happier person, I think you've just become a better operator in all manners of life, just being a better better photographer, better person to be around, a better husband. So um, work harder on yourself than on your job. Um, that's worked for me. And it's great. It ultimately lifts the self-confidence and the skills and, and everything that you do. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, it's a never, never ending task. Huh. It's a, it's never. Ending. I think that um, that might, it might kind of gently lead on to on to number four. Okay. Just about uh, your ability to change. So, ride the wave of change, or you'll find yourself beneath it. Um. For someone that's been photographing weddings for a long time now, I've kind of seen a lot of a lot of different styles of photography or different um, attitudes to photography or different new technologies that have come to affect our industry as we know it and ultimately my my job. So um, having an open mind to change whenever the market dictates is really really important especially for people that maybe be fairly one tracked how they see the world maybe especially as a man and a, a man that, that that's maybe a bit slow to change when necessary i think um if you can eventually be be open to change there's a this industry is changing all the time last year was a year of big change for me. I'll, a few examples, I fully, for the first time I embraced not supplying wedding albums to my clients, which is, so I've basically supplied 550 wedding albums to clients over the last many years. And only at the end of last year, I finally gave in and started offering digital only weddings which maybe I was the last person on the planet to do that, but I just, the thought of not supplying a wedding album was just so foreign and so sad to me. I, I love giving over the album a few months after the wedding, and, but, if it, but I had to do it because that's what the market wanted, especially around here, and, and maybe people were starting to spend less and we were going into some kind of, kind of economic downturn. So... Um, I embrace that and it's working grand for me. Maybe 30% of my winnings are now digital only. And it's grand, it's going to, it, it will allow me to, to thrive for another few years. And there's, there's a lovely book. I've, I've got some of my books here that I might just show you. Yeah. These are just the, the books that I've read. I've got a load of kind of self-development books but there was a lovely book that i read just when i really really needed it called who moved my cheese and it's really about change and it's about it's it's a it's a children's story really about two mice and they're used to every day they went to find their cheese because they were hungry and every day they left their wee hole and they went they went and found the cheese and the cheese was always there it was always in the same place 
But then one day the cheese wasn't there. And it just tracks their adventures of what they did and how the two different attitudes affected the two mice. Like one would one decided, I deserve the cheese, it should be there. I am entitled to that cheese every day, which I could kind of relate to as a wedding photographer that had success for a long time. I almost felt like I'm entitled to lots of bookings and lots and lots of success, but the market doesn't really see it that way. So one one mouse was entitled and the other mouse decided, I'm going to change, I'm going to go out here and find cheese and I'm going to try whatever I can to find this cheese. And he hunted and hunted and hunted and finally he found the other cheese. And they, while the, the, origin, the first mouse almost starved to death because he, he could not embrace change and he was scared of change and he was angry at the thought of change. But he eventually, the, the, the second mouse helped the first mouse to embrace it and slowly come around to the idea that you've got to change if you, want to, if you want to survive in this world. Change is necessary. And that, for me, that was so difficult. And some of the things that I do in my business now, I would have found impossible to comprehend a few years ago. And I'm finding happiness now as well with with supplying digital with being with integrating my business into Instagram every single day and embracing Instagram stories stuff that I would have been afraid of scared of angry at years ago I've allowed it into my life so um, mm. embracing change is the only way possibly for everyone but more so for people that have been doing this for a long period of time if you have I think in this country, maybe five years as a wedding photographer is kind of standard. And if you want to go any further, you've got to be flexible and you've got to, you've got to move with the times. Is that okay? I talked for a long time there. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to check out that book. That sounds uh, a simple story, but it's an important it's, lesson. Yeah. You could read it in a day and it's... Someone gave it to me when I really, really needed it and it saved me and it just helped me, helped me to ensure that my family can eat for the next few years because of my photography so it's as simple as maybe one conversation with the right person at the right time and maybe the right book and it's difficult and you got to grind into change and into the unknown but it's so so necessary yes thank you thank you okay sorry for that noise they are work on my backyard right now so okay yeah we got one last one. This is an interesting one, Jay. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure you won't get this lesson from any other wedding photographer. But uh this one is avoid the bride's bathroom at all costs. So I thought I would end this conversation on a lighter note and maybe add a wee bit of fun. Yes. A few years a few years back during a very busy wedding season I uh, before we left the bride's house in the morning so it's it's tends tends to be fairly traditional in Ireland we go to the bride's house we take photos of her getting ready and then we go to the chapel usually around one o'clock and it was about 10 to 1 and I had just the family outside the bride's house for a photograph and I said excuse me I got to go to the bathroom because you never know when you're going to pee again. It might be three hours because you have photos to do and you've got to go to the chapel. So I just sneaked in. And then the, when I tried to get out of the bathroom, the, the key in the lock broke. And it was really hot in the height of the summer. And everyone from the family was outside. So I was, they, they didn't know I was there. They couldn't hear me. So I tried to climb out the window. And... The window was so narrow, I couldn't, and I got stuck in the window, and I was shouting out, and no one, no one could hear me. And I was there just really having a panic attack, and I was trying to shout out the keyhole, help, I'm in the bathroom. And eventually the bride's dad came along, and he was, where the hell are you, man? We're all waiting for you. We're going to be late for chapel. And I told him, listen, I'm, I'm locked in this toilet. I can't get out. No one can hear me, because you were all down at the other side of the garden. So eventually the he just, the bride's father told me to stand back from the door and he just started to kick the door 
and kicked an almighty hole in the door and and he had a smile on his face when he saw me then and he, he helped me out through the hole in the door. And and we all, we laughed about it and we went to the chapel and we took photos for the rest of the day and everyone had a great fun story to tell about this 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 uh, idiot of a photographer that had got locked in the toilet. But that's just a story and I but I think maybe a teaching from that is sometimes try not to take ourselves so seriously. Surely we're wedding photographers, but it's nothing the world hasn't seen before. Um, laughter is good medicine. Maybe sometimes in the worst, in the worst scenarios, sometimes a bit of laughter will just uh, help you through your trials. Um, I think Irish people have that down to a fine art. Laughter is good medicine. Um, I hope that makes sense. Yes, yes. So, yeah. So, um, yes. So, Irish people are, are known for humor, I guess. Yeah, surely we've, um, <laughs> I guess it's one of our great strengths. Maybe it's, um, maybe might help endear us to people, but, um, beyond just basic comedy, just, just to, sometimes laughter is the only way to help yourself through the worst situations. Maybe that's unique to Ireland, but uh, sure. it's certainly helped me in a lot of times in my life. Sometimes you just got to laugh and know things are going to turn out for the best. Yeah, all right. Great, Jay. Thank you for talking with me. Um, it's been such an honor. I hope, I hope that someday I can help you out as much as you've helped me and my friends. Yeah, um, okay, so let me, let me see here. Cool. Yeah, you still there? Okay, good, good. Yeah, I'm here, man. All right, great. Yeah, no, thank you. And uh, it's good talking with you, get to uh, catch up with you. I hope that uh, the October will go well for you and um, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, I, I will try and join you at another fear, fearless conference if uh, the next time something's happening the Irish Brigade will be there yeah so let's hope for the best yeah listen good luck in America all our best of healing vibes across the sea whatever we can do um, if, if maybe if any photographers right there just need to talk just um, just send a message and open up to your friends or open up to people in communities. Um, right now, we need people more than ever. As simple as a conversation like this here can just have a great effect on anyone. Nothing profound, just a talk and a bit of chat and some laughs is, is maybe all we need sometimes. Thank you, Jay. Yeah, I feel like this is a really crucial time for all of us. Um, with what's going on here with the pandemic, the pandemic too, and it's yeah. uh, it's great that we we can be we can have each other for support. So thank you. We're lucky, you know. There's one thing right now is a very good time to be a wedding photographer because of the communities we have and the friends and everyone's open to help and change and share. It's an amazing time to be a wedding photographer. So um, we're so fortunate in that regard. Okay, well, thank you, Facebook friends, for watching. Thanks for being here. Uh, I'm gonna stop the stream. Thank you, Jay. It's um... good, my answer. I appreciate everything and appreciate your patience today. No problem. No problem. Right. Okay. I hate to see you go, but until next time, my friend. If you need a chat, if you if you want to send me a message anytime, I'm here. I will. I will. Thanks. All right, say bye to y'all, your family, your wife, beautiful kids. Thanks very much, sir. I'll see you soon. Okay, bye-bye.